My name is Robbie, I am a HIV activist, and it's a very important time in the terms of the HIV epidemic. We have the tools to end new HIV infections. We have the tools to end age-related deaths, and we have a goal to reach by 2030. We want to end AIDS. And the best tool in our arsenal to end AIDS is antiretroviral therapy, or HIV medication. What HIV medication does is it stops the virus from replicating, so the virus dies, but it lies dormant in different parts of your body. And so if your body um, has HIV hidden, well then your immune system works as normal and you live as long as anyone else. But what it also does is it gets the virus so low in your body to undetectable viral loads, levels that you just cannot pass on HIV. The risk is zero. So imagine a world where we had every single person living with HIV have access to medicines, get them virologically suppressed, we will reach our goals. Well, what's the problem? My research is looking into HIV treatment activism in Ukraine. Eastern Europe and Central Asia is the worst performing region in the world for new HIV diagnosis. And within the region, Ukraine is the second worst performing country for new HIV diagnosis in the world. So let's have a little look here at Ukraine. What's the situation? Now, we could spend hours just on this alone, but for timeliness, let's just look at um, how many people who know their status have access to treatment? 72%. Now, that's not great, because to end AIDS, we need 100% coverage. But also, it's not that terrible if you think it's the second worst country in the worst performing region in the world. But let's look at this in a contextual kind of way. Let's go back two years to 2016 to when this study was done. 240,000 people living with HIV in Ukraine and the coverage of antiretroviral therapy, HIV medication, was 37%. How did the Ukrainian government in two years increase uh, coverage of HIV therapy by 34%? Well, one of the biggest contributors to it all was HIV treatment activists, because they put enormous pressure on the Ukrainian government and pharmaceutical companies to reduce the prices of key HIV drugs. Now, was this an easy task? Well, as you can imagine, no. So there's lots of studies done on the political diversity and cultural diversity within Ukraine. Well, one such study uh, looked at the Your Maiden protest in um, 2013 and 2014. And what we've seen is that Ukrainians identify it as Ukrainian-Russian, or the Ukrainian-Europeans, or Ukrainian as Ukrainian, or this liminal stage of a stuck identity in between each one. So you might ask, what has this got to do with HIV or health reform? Well, it actually has a massive impact on it. So, we could go through this for ages, but again, let me give you a few examples. Leaving the Soviet Union, Ukraine has one of the worst um, reputations for increasing their health care in comparison to other um, ex-Soviet Union countries. Um, because they want to align themselves more with Europe, they've increased intellectual property right protections in the free trade agreements. This means, down the line, people who need access to treatment might not get them. And the research shows when you're in a liminal or you're in a stuck identity, is there much cultural progression? And this is very important for those people living with HIV, because HIV is so stigmatized in Ukraine. Because the most people, the people who are most likely to contract HIV are injecting drug users, gained by sexual men, transgender people, sex workers, and everyone who has sex with them. So because it's highly stigmatizing, how do we get everyone to get access to treatment? So although this is all happening, these treatment activists galvanized, they mobilized, and they increased twofold the access to medicines. My research is looking at the experiences of key treatment HIV activists in Ukraine. I want to gain an understanding of how they overcame the odds, how they overcame the strong political lobby of the pharmaceutical industry. How they came together in a country that is so super stigmatizing to those living with HIV. How they came together to make sure that the coverage was there for everyone who needed it. This research is important because all countries signed up to the UN, signed up to the Global Goals of 2030. We want to reach zero new HIV infections and AIDS-related deaths by 2030. This research is important because the access to um, medicines movement is growing globally, but there's such a dearth of knowledge, such a lack of knowledge when it comes to the role of civil societies in overcoming key barriers to access to medicines. And finally, 
academia can finally and continue to shine a spotlight on the HIV crisis that's happening in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. Imagine if we have all the academia to show activism that works, use the models that work. If we can inform policy and future activism in different political contexts, maybe and finally we can reach our goal and end AIDS. Thank you very much.